Welcome back, welcome back. I'm MTG Joe. Uh, so today we're going to be playing some more rotation proof decks, standard 2020. Uh, trying to get as many different archetypes as I can uh, before we get throne cards coming in. Uh, so one that's usually heavily requested is monocolor decks. Um, so this is a mono green stompy deck. So stompy is generally referred to as uh, over under costed fatties in green. So think steel leaf champion, a three mana five four. Um, so big creatures for low mana. Uh, generally are vanilla or just have like trample, but we're looking to stomp our opponent to death with a mono green deck um, There's quite a few good mono green support cards uh, the guardian uh, I think the guardian beast the legendary uh, Four mana just all the text in the world the troll the new land that came out that can Tap the land plus four mana you get six green mana. So there's a lot of good cards in mono green Um so that's something we want to explore, so this will likely change once we get the new cards out. So to walk you through the deck at a high level, uh, Pelt Collectors are one drop. Uh, it gets bigger with the more creatures we play that are bigger than it, and when bigger creatures die, it keeps getting bigger. Uh, so this is something that scales towards the late game. Uh, we have Growth Chamber Guardian, which goes and finds more copies of Growth Chamber Guardians. Uh, so over two turns, it can become a 4-4. Paradise Druid is the only ramp in the deck. Um, the reason... A lot of the creatures you'll see come down at an early stage, so we don't need too much ramp for our curve. Um, we're not playing anything like Mass Manipulation or Hydroid Crisis in these particular builds. We top out for 5 mana. Um, but I like Paradise Druid because it's also an attacker, and it can't be shocked or targeted, so we can go 2 drop, 4 drop, uh, which is quite useful for this deck. Uh, Barkhide Troll is a basically a 2 mana 3-3 three, three with pseudo protection for 1 mana. Um, so this is a good aggressive threat. It's a way to evolve the Pelt Collector. Uh, Viridian's Arcbow uh, is something I wanted to try for this deck. So you don't generally get card advantage in a mono green shell. Uh, so this is a way we could convert late game our lands into more powerful creatures. Uh, lets us dig, especially if we have like a Nisa out, to double the mana that goes into it. I have one copy of Voracious Hydra just as a fight spell. In kind of a mana sink. Again, we're not a dedicated ramp deck, so not going all in on Hydra. That might be wrong, um, and it might be something we want to, after playing a couple more games, to see. I played two games with it offline. I got out grueled by like a fast Dom restart, and then I beat up a cup, uh, a mono black deck or black white deck. Uh, they were stuck on mana. Uh, Finale is another way that late game we could sink mana into it. So early we can get something like a Ceratops or any of our creatures. Uh, late game we could get either like a God Eternal Ronas or if we pump X or more, uh, it's basically Crater Hoof Behemoth. It's an Anthem effect for our team. Uh, Vivian, Champion of the Wilds. It's a way to give our creatures flash so we can play on our opponent's turn. Uh, this gives it pseudo haste. It also lets us dig and is a way to give this deck reach, which is something that green generally lacks, um, but it's a way to kind of play with that. Um, sorry, just give me a sec to drink. Sorry about that. Ate some sushi and it just uh, dried up my mouth. Uh, we got some shifting ceratops. Uh, so this, in the new deck, will likely be some numbers of guardian beasts or something like that. But it's a 4 mana, 5, 4, pro blue, can't be countered. 5 mana also gets haste. Uh, it could get trample, it could get reach. So a couple utility spells for that extra green mana in the deck. Vivian Arcbow Ranger is a very good Planeswalker if you can support it. Um, so three green is a little rough in most mana bases, but in our deck it's perfectly fine. Uh, basically it just makes all our little dorks just a lot bigger, gives them uh, trample as well. Also has the benefit of fighting or dealing damage, not fighting, which is important because our creature doesn't necessarily need to die. And its pseudo ultimate is choose a creature you card from outside the game. So basically your sideboard, reveal, put in your hand. For best the one, that means we get a wish board. So I, you'll see here we have 12 cards. I'll walk you through what we can tutor um, as kind of a, like similar to Karn when we play best of one and we have a wish board, same effect. I got one, God Eternal Ronas. It's a way for us to just double up on our team and kind of win out of nowhere. It's a nice way to play it with either like Vivian's Arcbow or with Flash with this Vivian. So it's kind of cool there. 
Uh, Cavalier of Thorns, it's a 5 mana, 5, 6 reach that gets us ahead of mana and basically recycles whatever our best card in our graveyard is once it dies. And then Nisa, she's great. Every green deck pretty much plays her. Uh, just a really good way to turn your Exos lands, ramp, everything in one spell. Uh, we can also get 24 lands with her ultimate, which is kind of cool. Uh, so sideboard wise, or wishboard. Couple Crawl Harpooners for the Flyers, Thrashing Brontodons for like Nexus matchup, or not Nexus, Wilderness Reclamation, Force of Habit there. Beast Whisperer when we need card draw, Golgari Raiders as like a hasty threat that can win on the spot if we have a lot of creatures in our graveyard. Biogenic Ooze is a mana sink and just kind of a one creature that keeps making more creatures. Crawl Foragers versus the Mono Red deck, gain a bunch of life. Garth Gargos versus like, say like a black blue deck or something like that with a lot of targeted removal and raise forerunners is like another mini crater hoof behemoth effect and a second voracious hydra out of the sideboard Do we have another one yeah we're gonna play another might as well we have the 15 spots so that's pretty much the deck we will play a couple games first because i keep playing random decks and then losing all the progress i make getting closer to mythic uh, so we'll see how it goes first, then we'll play some games in the ranked if need be. Uh, so for those tuning in live, thanks for joining on Twitch. Uh, if you want to know when I'm live, the best way to do so is follow on Twitch. I'm probably going to be uh, Tuesday, Thursdays around 6.30 Eastern time for sure, and then try to get some weekend streams in, uh, and then kind of whenever the schedule kind of more for an impromptu. Uh, so this hand's pretty aggressive. Three drop, three, three power, three power, three power, and the growth chamber to keep the gas going. Um, and then, as always, all my content is available on my YouTube channel. So if you catch it there, uh, if you enjoy the channel, subscribing is a free and easy way to help support the channel. Also, announced a giveaway today on the channel. Uh, we hit a, a thousand subs, so we will be giving away a play set of Lotus Fields uh, for now until we can get something cooler from Toronto Um the wind So if you like it, the channel, want to help support, you can throw that sub in and you'll be entered into the draw. So they did get a Mu Jian Ling, which kind of slows down our attack. Mortals are so reckless. Uh, we need to watch out in this deck against a Ritualist Soot. Oh, they pop straight for the the emblem here. Ooh, into Kefnet. Very aggressive start. So, thought we were going to be the big boys with the 3-3s, three threes, but it turns out we just got these wee little 3-3s three threes against these four power creatures. Ritualist Soot still like blows us out. <laughs> Tyrant Scorn. So I'm just gonna go Arc Bow here, and then we're just gonna start pumping mana into Arc Bow. Got the negate. Kind of rough. Uh. I think we just gotta attack, try to get their life as low as possible, so if we get a Ceratops, it can do some work. We can also just give these protection if they have targeted removal by popping a mana. Opponent's going a little conservative here. The Mu Jing. Mu Yang Ling. Even a light breeze. The sky is my domain. Okay, so we can growth chamber. Um This is rough. So I'm attacking with both just to hit this down, so if they want another four four they have to kill it. They don't get the free 4-4 value. Get Tyrant score in here. This 
So we're gonna adapt here. They can play it again, but the taxes them on their mana this turn. Yeah, Ceratops might be our only answer. They pop that. They'll hit us for eight here. Even Ceratops at this point is not gonna do much. All right. Got taken down by the birdies. So green like decks like this are generally a little weaker to the flyers. Um, even something honestly like if we got Cavalier Thorns there would have been really good against that board state had we got it like a turn earlier. Uh, if we got the the bow down, that would have been useful to like surprise block and also just gain card advantage in that matchup. I like this overlay. It's a nice uh, deck. I guess it's Throne of Eldraine. Yeah. Keep this hand. So we can go Pelt Collector into Paradise Druid, evolve the Pelt Collector. And if we draw another land, that's a turn three Vivian. So I want to hit a land here in the next two drops. This looks like a Gates deck. There's been a lot of Gates decks. Or maybe not, just like a green white tokens style deck. Uh, no sense of attacking, we're not gonna get any utility here. And opponent concedes. Likely what I would have done that turn is play Pelt Collector and then uh, play out the uh, Growth Chamber Guardian. And then the next turn we play Vivian, and then we can put a counter on the Growth Chamber Guardian, which triggers its adapt ability, and then go get another Growth Chamber. And that's a cool way you can kind of keep chaining together without pu pumping in three mana. Shodi Lior, what you got? A uh, little heavy mana wise, but we have a sink for the first few turns, so I don't mind it as much. Uh, we see the Bloodfell Caves, this can be a couple things. Uh, likely not Gates, it's probably Rakdos Agra. I will take this trade here. This way they only get to kill one of our things. Here I'm gonna go Paradise Druid so they can't target it. The only thing that's weaker against is a second Dreadhorde Butcher. Because next turn I can go Paradise Druid and Growth Chamber Guardian in the same turn. This is the Rakdos Aggro deck that's been going around. Uh, I think if we control this, it gives us the best chance. So same plan, Paradise Druid, that way I can adapt the Growth Chamber the turn it comes down. We're going to have to take the damage this time. Got at least two hasters out. It's a very aggressive start by them. Ah, Chandra. No. Don't say hi to my fiery friends. No blocks. So Vivian's actually. I've lost so much already. Kind of cool here. I won't lose more. Because we can surprise in a growth chamber guardian. So they can attack. I still think we dig just to get some more. You fight like a city brat. I'll take that. No attacks here. We'll just end the turn. So we can uh, 
like adapt this turn. We'll see how they attack. If they go all three here. Okay, they throw one at us. So I'm gonna just block one here. They'll pump here, that's fine. I need to find like a voracious Hydra. I like this because Vivian can flash in the Ceratops. I'm not losing it. And then I can double block on this, or I can adapt. Adapt to block that way. And deal two damage. Ooh, Vivian Arcbow. Um, so I'm going to use that for the following turn because then we can fight it. All things begin and end in nature. So we're going to do this and then adapt it to take down. Hey Noada, how's it going? Uh, we will go get a growth chamber guardian. So this is a nice interaction, attacker blocker. To sleep for a week and we will just pass the turn so here I'm just gonna probably throw the growth chamber in front of the night I like this having the hex proof that way when we start putting counters on it it gets better So it's four, no, we're one mana short. So we're just gonna do this. Okay, so they play priest so they can't pump, which is fine. Awesome, let me know how it differs. It didn't play out as well as I thought it would. So, target a creature you control, target a creature your opponent controls. Let's get this stupid knight off the board. Let's go heart fire. Uh, so, we'll plus this again. Have you ever lost a home? This is a free attack, so we'll take it. So I'm gonna f block and then flash in Growth Chamber Guardian. So before damage, we flash this in, use the mana that we get. So we still have the Ceratops as a surprise blocker. Um, so I can go Null Hide, but then I'm short a mana. Kind of want to go Ceratops here. Let's see what we get. Tear it down. Yeah. Tear it all down. So really, it's only creatures that matter. Put a counter on this. And put a counter on this. Oh, I guess it's all a single target. Then we get to search for another growth chamber I'd guardian. Be out of the way if I were you. So we'll pass the turn. So I want to see how they attack here. 
kind of indicate what we want to do in terms of blocking. here, get them to pump the mana into it. Just play that out, go to our turn. Oh, Nisa's sweet. Nisa is sweet. I protect that which cannot protect itself. Behold, nature's true power! Uh, so let's give this vigilance. Strike now! Strike and hard! And give this... Make those really big. I'd get out of the way if I were you. And then, the, so basically hitting for 10 with vigilance each turn. And then I'm just gonna flash this in as a dummy. Next turn I can play arc bow, dig really deep. And try to find uh, like Ronas or, or something. Take ten. So we'll go Bark Hide Troll, flash that in. Also, the nice thing so Vivian resets the hexproof on Bark Hide Troll. We're playing Mono Green Super Friends. <laughs> I still love this card. It's good at any point of the game. This just looks like Rakdos Aristocrats in the end. So they go after Nisa. The nice thing is this forces them to pump. They have two pumps, so that would take out Ceratops. Also kill Nisa, so we want to keep Nisa alive. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Running back. Actually got a rare from those uh, free cards you get. Got Flooded Tears, which is good because we only had the two. I think Flooded Tears and like an artifact deck kind of bounce all your artifacts, play them out again for value. Um, so here, keep that. So I want to see what they played this turn, if this is like Feather, this is like Mardu Aristocrats. Or some sort of Mardu deck. So I got a Paradise Druid. This lets me play double two drop next turn. Also, these are colors of tons of removal. And we have a hexproof threat. So unless they go Plague Crafter. Uh, so let's go you. And then go you. Drawing this kind of sucks. So this is probably some sort of Mardu control or mid-range, maybe a Chandra deck. Really a... Uh, growth Chamber Guardians aren't as good when you just draw Growth Chamber Guardians. I will protect the virtue of this world. The land shall conquer you. So here this are uh, both free attacks, they can't kill either, so just do this. They also were super dead to Clarion. 
Uh, so I don't think we can really play around it. Our best bet is to float a bunch of mana devastation. Do not underestimate and go from my there. Fortitude. So that's six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So if we draw a forest, we can X twelve. It's not the end of the world. Okay, cool. So this the land fights for us. So that was turn five. Turn five, we had a 26, 24. Claim our prize. Uh, let's play some, how are we doing time-wise? Let's play some ranked. Uh, actually, do we wanna make, is there a fight card that we can use? Arcbow's been pretty lackluster. Let's put the Voracious Hydra in the deck. Uh, where are you, Voracious? Voracious. Nope. Two of you. One in the sideboard. Maybe even three. And then, oh, no. you gotta do the uh, the ghetto way to search. Let uh, me want to fight. Target creature you control. So this is instant speed, which is probably better. Titanic Brawl. There's a lot of ways that our creatures have 1-1 one, one counters on it, so it could be something useful. This includes like Nisa land, stuff like that. So the deck tool will be just a little outdated right now. Um, I just want to see how this one goes. Also, for those who haven't played today, they changed the way the standard. You don't have to get two consecutive wins. One win gets you 50, then 150, then 250. I'm at diamond rank three right now, so two or three tiers below mythic. Uh, pretty much all the leveling up this month has been on Golos Field. Hey, Lullaby, how's it going? Sounds pretty sweet. Worst case, just use these as big guys, um, but we can do a little bit better on the play. Ley line of anticipation. Okay. This is probably going to be a Wilderness Reclamation deck. I like what they're playing though. We're playing against some EDH stuff now. We're going to evolve here. Just attack in. Doesn't look like it. So we'll take a growth chamber. I'm just gonna beat in at this point. Okay. Yeah, I believe you can. Um, so we're gonna attack in first, let them make the first move. Gonna lead off with the elf. Play out a 
Another growth chamber. This will evolve Pelt Collector. Um, level 99, I did have a mono black mid range deck. I posted it a couple weeks ago. You can check it out on my channel. Um, in between matches, actually, I don't have it on the arena right now just because I do so many. But yeah, check out either aetherhub.com uh, with my username. All my rotation proof decks. There's actually an article on the front page. Here, hold up. Let me find it. I posted like 20 plus articles there. While our opponent does their turn. Uh, da -da -da. Okay, so you can find a bunch of decks here, including the mono black. My. Cool, took him out. So this is a reclamation deck, but we beat him. Um, the one thing that didn't really work out too well was I had the um, uh, the four drop uh, that cares about swamps sorry there's a lot of card names um, he was really good in the deck but uh, the dinosaur the three drop dinosaur that makes you discard the seven six those two didn't really play well together so this hand's kind of a trap we don't do anything for a few turns so I'm gonna mulligan this hand's a lot better Put Ronas. No. Ronas, go away. So we can evolve and then fight. Uh, or we can just never evolve and just draw all five drops. Okay, sweet. Take a chance. I got the deck. Yeah, Blue Eye Flyers is around a lot. Um, they had the big uh, like Twitch streaming event today, so a lot of uh, bigger name players were playing a whole bunch of decks. Lots of Golos decks, like gate variations on gates. Yeah, Fandom Legends. I've fine. seen worse. Starting over is the um, only way. Ceratops guarantee we play. Cavalier gets us ahead on mana, but I think we just go with the guarantee creature here. Jeff Hoogland's called it best with Flash. Flash is the deck you love to play but hate to play against. It's the same like with a lot of the Field of the Dead decks, like with Scape Shift. I can help you no more. Okay, so we're getting out all these big decks. Rise, my elemental friend. So if they're one for running us, they're eventually gonna need to find a way to catch up. Cool. Took them out. Interesting they gave up then. We played, uh, we tried mono blue flash or mono blue tempo yesterday, rotation proof, because the uh, fairy vandal from Eldrain you can play right now from the Brawl event. It was okay when uh, you got. It'll get better, I think, Simic Flash when the new set comes out. There's that new wolf that whenever a creature. So it's a flash wolf that uh, gets bigger. Um, whenever you cast a creature, you can pay X into it and it gets plus XX. So this hand's good because we can evolve a Paradise Druid, and if we draw another land, play Shifting Ceratops. I actually like this deck quite a bit. Cool, got the land we need. And this looks like some sort of ramp deck. In best of one, I find if you could be proactive, like a lot of these decks, the opponents are trying to react with us, and if we can just keep pumping out threats, especially if it's one for one, we'll usually come up ahead. Because like in that ga past game, Nisa creates a creature, so they need to deal with Nisa and the elemental. And if they're just using like a, a one 
burn spell or removal, then it doesn't do as much. So we see blue and we have a Ceratops. So this might be Flash as well. This also makes it big enough that it can go through a Brineborn Cutthroat if this is Flash. They might have a summon here. They take the damage. Brineborn. Yeah, uh, Ceratops is awesome against that deck, and if we can ever resolve a Vivian, it really screws up the math on or the timing. No, no. Now the opponent's very sad. Because what's better than one Ceratops against this deck? And now Pelt Collector also gets Flash. Or sorry, Trample. Let's give this haste. And attack for 14. Fine. Still pro blue. They need to do 20 damage this turn. Um, if you can get ahead and you can play the wolf, you're okay, because you can get a stream of chump blockers, at least in the interim. But Ceratops into Cer so turn three Ceratops into turn four Ceratops with haste is usually a little too much. Alright, three owed. What are we at now? Diamond 3. That was quick, so let's run it back for another one. They still haven't fixed the interface here. For those tuning in, we are playing a mono green stompy list. Um, so it's just a bunch of big creatures that are under costed that we smash in. Uh, there's this version of the deck compared to the one that's on the stream deck right now I haven't had a chance to um, update it just yet um, but we just added some titanic brawls in the main um, so two of these and another voracious hydra we cut down on the vivian arcbo i uh, wasn't doing that much in the deck thanks level uh the it was a pretty good deck the xl one it attacked on a different axis and it gained a lot of life um, so when this format was really early on, just all Cavalcade, it ate that deck up. That deck spurred from the fact that I got tired of losing to Kethis combo in uh, normal ranked. Alright opponent, what are you deciding on? Yeah buddy, you're the one holding up. So I'm going to probably go Growth Chamber and then Barkai to get two Evolves on Pelt Collector. Uh, yeah, so I'll show the deck list right after. Um, so the really the only changes we made were we dropped the three Arc Bows in the main and I added two Titanic Brawls and um, another Voracious Hydra main. So that's pretty sweet, because now we can do this, we can do this, and I have Titanic Brawl up to fight an opponent's creature. And then next turn I can adapt Growth Chamber Guardian if we want. Uh, target creature you control fights. I'm gonna get rid of the Hanged Executioner. Just because it can exile one of our things. And then we can attack in for a bunch more. Still in play Cutness combo. I uh, I just I ran into it a lot. I don't enjoy playing against that deck. So we'll attack in here. I think we go double paradise here. Just makes us go super wide. And this opponent's salty. 
You tell them once. Yeah, so they basically self-mill their deck with um, the like a bunch of legendary spells, and then they use Kefness. So you fight you. Actually, I should have just done that. They do deploy. I'm just going to attack in with everything. We should be... Yeah. We exact seize them regardless. And we get another one. It's funny, we've done better with this deck in the ranked queue. Yeah, the Kethnis combo is very powerful and quite consistent. It's very convoluted to play um, and it's got just pretty much all rares and mythics in it uh, it's one of those decks you play against and main board my win condition in game one in some decks is just make them play through their combo especially because i play nexus of fate so if they don't see the nexus they'll try to mill me so i try to beat that deck by them going to time um, but they've recently started playing Jace in the main board, so that gets around the Nexus loop. Um, but that's one of the ones I'll go play with my dog and then come back and then they're still comboing out. Alright, uh, so I'll need some lands, like the top end. We got Pelt Collector that can then fight with a Titanic Brawl. I don't know if you could hear my neighbors. I live in a townhouse, so I have my neighbor on my right side talking from his balcony to the neighbor on my left side. Okay. So, mono red is a little scary. Okay, good to know. I can never tell how much I can hear versus the, radio, the, the mic picks up. Okay, so there's a shock. So this is Rakdos Aggro. So I'm gonna go Druid here. Gets protected. Um, so here... I'm gonna let them pump if they want. I'm gonna try to get it in a situation where I can fight it with a Titanic Brawl when... There's no attacks here. This is always a tough card. Like, timing's really key. Would've liked to have Pelt Collector. We would've been able to evolve it. And then have this to fight for one. Um... Do I want to keep... So I'm going to force them. It's odd they pump here. They don't get any benefit from doing so. Other than tapping out, because now I can... Voracious for three. And then fight it. So they could have protected it that way, but we caught them, and now we have a 3-4, followed up with Cavalier. I'll attack in first. Come on. Get up their lands. So when Cavalier dies, we can get Vivian back. I'm just going to end the turn here. Depending on what creature they play. Yeah, it looks like Rakdos Aristocrats. Um, I'm going to fight the Priest. Yeah, so we fight Priest now. I 
Get that out of the way. I have to take him down. Welcome to my symphony of five and zero in ranked so far. We're gonna go a full level up here. Who'd have thought? Me actually trying for mythic. Last month I tried. This month I'm, I'm trying, kinda. But if I make it on Singleton Standard 2020, it'll be a reward for doing so many uh, rotation-proof decks up to this point. Yeah, I think the opponent misplayed there. There was no reason for them to pump there. Uh, this hand's a little loose, but we'll try it out. Hopefully they're a little slower, or we can get a 2-drop to evolve these. Okay, so we got Paradise Druid, that's nice. Sorry, when I say evolve, evolve is an old mechanic. Whenever a creature with power toughness greater than the creature came into play, you put a 1-1 counter on it, which is effectively what this ability is. So this gates. Oh my god, that's annoying. Gotta get a new mouse. So another land gets us the Cavalier. Gates of Blaze only does 3 damage. Yeah, it's from original Ravnica and then uh, the Gate Crash the block. So that's when I played like a ton of competitive standard in Estrad and then returned to Ravnica. Okay, so they have a 4-4. Four, four. Uh... So, what I'm gonna do... Ah, I screwed that up. I didn't mean to do that. Um, let's see. Let's see if they take the trade. Because this, I need two mana to cast because it doesn't have a 1 1 counter on it. That was my mistake. Uh, like when I was playing in open beta for wild cards, I didn't spend anything. Like, I did my dailies. I'm okay at draft. I won't say I'm the world's good but just doing your dailies uh, you can usually kind of queue into one or two decks so they go clarion here so you fight you this means that the gatebreaker ram also dies So another land gets his Cavalier. It really depends on your playstyle level. Um, like what types, do you like aggro, mid-range control, are there any colors in particular that you're fond of? Finale, I can do for two. We wait a turn. Uh, no attacks here. Just pass the turn. Um, if you like white black, I'd say maybe hold off right now. Um, Knights seems to be predominantly white black, and there's a lot of good support in that deck. Okay, so we lost this game. That Clarion ended up being, or the second ram actually. And not hitting any more lands. Um, White Black Knights or Mardu Knights seems like it could be something in the new set. On Friday, once Aether Hub gets all the new cards up, uh, then I can put together some more deck lists with the new set. Yeah, we fell too behind here. No blocks. The Ram having, they're gonna untap and then Golos. Too far. All right, our streak ended. Five and one in ranked. Go low stacks. If you can't kill them early, they'll kill you. Y 
Yeah, I agree with what Lullaby said. Um, also, level if you haven't seen before, I do a bunch of what are called budget build series. So what I do is, so say like a tier one deck list, like Esper Control. What I do is I make three variations of the deck. So the first list is all commons and uncommons minus the mana base. Uh, the second version of the deck is like 10 or so rares. And then um, then I do like the fully tuned version and I do a write up and I explain everything, like the thought process. So I take you step by step through three budgets on how to build the deck. Uh, my favorite color combinations, if we're talking in standard, uh, probably Sultai or right now, like, I like control. So whatever the prominent control colors are, blue, black is generally there. Um, go from that. In EDH, uh, Sultai and Teamer are my favorite. Yeah, so basically Sultai, T uh, Teamer is not as good in standard, I find. Um, but I want to be able to have answers to every type of threat. So whatever deck offers me that option is usually the deck I play. So this is another Gates deck. Like right now, I sold a bunch of my EDH stuff when I started streaming. I had a ton of decks. Like I had a fully foiled out uh, Tasker combo deck. Um, I had probably like 10, 15 EDH decks. I like, I love combo in EDH, but like convoluted combo that takes like 13 cards to actually pull off. Um, and then like right now all I have left built for when I play with my buddies is uh, Maelstrom Wander, free stuff. But I'm going to probably put together Golos, EDH, play Golos, uh, Maze's End. Uh, yeah, Denier looks pretty solid. Let's Plays the start. Wanderer. I must reach the bigger they are. Well, yeah. That is just random. Like I played the Wanderer, but that was for a combo deck. Be wary of the ground you walk on. All right, let's just kill this because all our stuff's gonna be bigger. <sighs> One who beat. I'm Next turn we can do a big Voracious Hydra. Uh, they do have Gateway Plaza. Okay, so Gateway's not for uh, gates, it's just a f color fix. Mono Blue Mill of some sort actually looks pretty solid as well. This isn't a fight, you There's that one drop that mills to and does like a whole bunch of stuff. Just flip the mana in case. No, I am not making this up as I Yeah, Command the Dread Horde. So it's an Abzan self mill, use Command the Dread Horde. Uh, the knight that uh, gives you uh, the one that whenever a creature comes into play, it uh, gets the bonus or it deals a damage, and then you play a bunch of afterlife threats. It wipes your board. Sorry, let me just see how much mana I have. So this says, do you have time wipe? If not, you lose. Actually, they could have to ferry to bounce. Yeah, you basically reanimate everything with Command the Dread Horde, and then Massacre Girl wipes your board. You get all the death triggers from Cruel Celebrant, all the Enter the Battlefield uh, triggers from uh, the Knight, and you just deal like a ton of damage. I think I got up to like 140 triggers on the stack. Arena didn't crash, which was kind of cool. I thought for sure that would crash. There's also like with the Folio of Follies, uh, I want to play that, Narset, Emergency Powers, Smothering Tide, to just play like a prison deck. Okay, so opponent's digging. Open mind. See what they get here. Cool. Took him down. Yeah, the other Scrylines. I really like Scrylines, like, 
I was playing Esper Control when the Scry Lines were first a thing, and they helped that deck out so much. Like, my only win conditions were original Ashiok and then an, an Elspeth, just playing Sphinx's Revelation and those cards. So 6-1 and one with rank play with this deck. Uh, I, can't, I still don't understand how we did better in rank than we did in unranked. Um, but this is pretty much the deck. Uh, so we have a mono green stompy deck. This deck felt really good. Um, Titanic Brawl was much better in the deck. Uh, I think overall we keep it exactly as it was. The extra voracious hydras were nice. Just overall I was quite pleased with this deck. I'm probably going to play it more off stream because we are ranking up and the decks, the games go a lot faster than playing Golos. Um, in case you want to see, this is the deck I'm using right now. It's pretty much Autumn, Burchett's main board. And then I made my own sideboard. So this is my rank deck. So basically Golos, some time wipes main. You get Golos out, you loop Nexus of Fates and just get infinite attack steps pretty much with Field of the Dead. Uh, then I got the sideboard. I just got more like agents. Palaka Worm has won so many games. It's such a random card, but I've won so many games with it. And then just like a, I went more because I kept losing to like early aggro decks and mono red. So I just hedged that matchup. Um, we can probably do, let me do a fun of deck. Uh, let's do artifact pile. I haven't played this in a while. So the one change I need to make, Flood of Tears in, and how many lands to be playing in this deck? 24. Could probably cut a land down. Get rid of Field of Ruin. Okay, so this deck here. Let me show you is pretty much what the name alludes to it's a pile of artifacts so this is a mono blue golos <laughs> field of the dead tesserator mashup hybrid um, so what we're trying to do is uh through mox amber and some legendaries we can get some colored mana so we can get basically blue red or black, um, Fountain of Renewals for the early decks, uh, Guild Globe basically cycles itself and we can sack it to fix our mana, Treasure Map gives us color fixing, um, Sai and Sahili both make uh, tokens off of all our artifacts, Chromatic Lantern fixes our mana so we can activate Golos, uh, Karn gets really big constructs based on all our artifacts, Karn the create Creator can search for stuff outside of our library. So we have a, this is a best of one deck with a wish board, similar to the Vivian. Mystic Forge lets us play all these cards off the top of our library for uh, kind of like Experimental Frenzy, but we can play still play stuff in our hand. Golos is an artifact, but can also search for Field of the Dead or any of our utility lands. Then Flooded Tears I'm adding into the deck to basically when you have one of these out, you can bounce all our stuff and then recast it all to get um, all the tokens again. Uh, Tezzeret is a way for us to one-shot our opponent with its plus ability. Uh, plus it makes our Planeswalkers have affinity for, so basically they cost one less for each artifact we control, so with so many artifacts these end up costing nothing. Uh, Ugin reduces the cost of all our colorless spells, which makes all these cost less. So with Ugin out and a Mystic Forge, all these cost zero to play. All, this costs one, these all cost two mana, so it reduces the deck. So you basically can play through a huge chunk of your deck and win. Uh, or I've almost decked myself out a couple times. Mana base wise, we have uh, blue based lands, uh, so the scry lands where they exist, uh, of each color. Then we have like Arch, Blast Zone, Cryptic Cave to draw cards, Field of the Dead, Interplanar Beacon. For Planeswalkers, Karn's Bash, Immobilized Districts. So just a whole bunch of colorless utility lands. Sideboard wise. So Grafdigger's Cage versus like Kethys. Sentinel Totem uh, for uh, Exiling Graveyards. Amulet of Safekeeping versus Token Decks. Uh, Sorcerer's Spyglass versus Planeswalkers. Chaos Wand against like Grixis, stuff like that. 
Another chromatic lantern in case we need to search it if we don't have the one in our library. Crucible of Worlds and Field of Ruin is a piece to take out lands. A Golden Guardian is a fight card that we can use. Icy Manipulator versus like Feather or like single creatures. My anti self uh, draw your deck out tech is Drunk Troller. It's an 06 for 4 mana that you can put a card at, from, uh, from a graveyard on the bottom of their library. So you can just keep recycling. God Pharaoh Statues, another win condition. Immortal Sun. Uh, so what you can do is you can Immortal Sun lock out your opponent. Um, and then we can sack this with our uh, Psy. And then we can Ultimate Planeswalkers. And then some Meteor Golems as removal. Uh, Jace could win in the deck, but the thing is, I don't have a way if I, if it gets killed early or anything like that. Um, let's just go play. So this deck's really fun to play. It's not the most super consistent, but when it goes off, it's really funny. Uh, just give me a sec. It's getting dark in here. I'm just gonna turn on the light. So I'm going to go, I'll keep this temple into treasure map, into Psy, into these guys. So usually I like to have Fountain of Renewal on one, uh, especially just against aggressive decks. We are on the draw as well. But usually if I could play a turn two spell into like a Psy or a Sahili. Mystic Forge is pretty good card advantage. Uh, I want lands right now. We want to get to at least our fourth land without having to scry. Really throw the, the opponent for a loop. Um, I don't think we're gonna. Eh, let's play Sahili. Let's take Sahili. I don't have a second blue. So that answers that question. So this can be Bant Ramp, yeah. It could be Scape Shift as well. So play Psy. So we want to dodge Teferi this turn. Mana base wise, this looks more like Bant Ramp. Oh, no, it's Scape Shift. So it's a field deck. So here, we have a couple plays we can do. This can go and get safekeeping, but I think we just go the card advantage play right now. I have made good choice. Uh... I feel like a lot of people are playing fair field decks or like more value like Golos field so scape shift wins in a turn but once they run out of lands they kind of lose a lot of that utility with Golos field once I can if I untap with Golos I pretty much always win the game and even after multiple board wipes it's still really good. Um, like I can still rebuild really quickly with the Nexus of Fate. You don't worry about decking out. Uh, same with Yark Field, which I played a lot last season. Um, you just get a lot of that utility. Yark double triggers off each land entering the battlefield, so you play one land. So it's less all in combo. Okay, so Gross Spiral. Okay, so they hit their Field of the Dead. So we got double guild globe. Uh, let's plus Karn here. Are you certain of your decision? I'd probably give me another sigh. So we want to hit a land, which we do. 
just in case we get a tap land. Which we do. So we show the opponent. We too are playing Field of the Dead. So like a scape shift scary here, we have no way to really do anything. And that's what's tough, being mono blue, you don't really have a clean answer. Yeah, this looks like scape shift. Float all your mana, scape shift for a ton. So I can go get the safekeeping thing. It'll drop down a power. But depending on how many they get after this, we might still get. Because if they get like 40, we drop it to like 20 power. What do we have exiled? Because our only answer is Flooded Tears. So we're gonna get what, 28 of them, so we can survive the turn actually. we can. I think we're like one power. <laughs> oh, no, now we can't. We got Krasis. So they have 29 of these, so they'll have 29 damage. So they have 29 damage. Let's see if we get Flooded Tears. Choice. We don't. Twenty nine, we would have been able to no, we would have been dead regardless. So they went wider than we did. Uh, it was unlikely even if we pulled the flooded tears there that and that was the matchup that I kinda wanted flooded tears for. Um, it lets us do something in that case. We'll run one more. Okay, I like this better. Double Fountain. So although these are better with keeping it for Psy, getting them set up earlier is better, just to buffer your life total. Why is my mouse sticking? Come on, mouse. So we gain two life a turn. This looks like... Teamer Adapt, maybe? Land. Just play that out. So I'm gonna go Mystic Forge probably next turn. Until we know what we're playing against. I'd rather not tutor with Karn. Guardian Project. Oh, this might be uh, Vanifar. It's actually pretty sick. With Mox Amber, we get another token and. So Mystic Forge lets you pay a life to exile the top card of your library. What is this deck? Is it just like I'm playing Singleton EDH? Testing out my Brawl deck? Second Guardian Project. We also 
Uh, not quite. Not quite. If we had a land, it would have been free. Draw that. Tez is something I want, so I'm willing to keep it. Because then with Affinity, these all cost nothing with Tezzerite out, so we can play all four Planeswalkers next turn. Token for two. So it's actually going to be a hilarious thing. So Tezzerite means all these cost nothing. <laughs> so we'll see if the opponent concedes. Unless they combo kill us somehow this turn. They're playing Card Draw Tribal, which is the sound of every EDH deck I build. So we'll see how many cards we can cast off these guys. seen the master of the bridge. I don't have a Discord group right now. I just actually signed up for Discord for like the first time. Um, just like a second. Let me just play at this turn. And, uh, We just go Meteor Golem. Uh, probably get rid of probably one of these. Are you free? I gotta pay one. Don't concede! Don't concede! I want to beat you the right way. More power! Alright, so that's pretty much how what happens with the deck. You kind of go crazy playing colorless super friends. Um, I don't know what his deck, his or her deck was, but... We got to do our thing, so I'm happy with that. Um, I'll try to figure out how to set up a Discord group. Um, I'm still trying to get some more of the stream stuff uh, set up. I was doing mostly YouTube up to this point, but now that I can actually stream on a set schedule, Tuesdays and Thursday nights, um, we'll get it from there. Um, I'm going to wrap it up now. We did a couple streams today. i got to take the dog out. Uh, thanks for everyone who stopped by. Uh, if you missed any part of the video or you came for mono green and saw artifacts, I'll have that video up on YouTube uh, probably in the next day or so. I'm going to paste them out just for because uh, I won't be back until Thursday. So Thursday I should be streaming around 6.30 Eastern time. Uh, so we can go from there. If you ever want to chat or anything, either uh, add me on Twitter, mtg underscore Joe, the number two or uh, Reddit, or Aetherhub if you have questions on the deck, or even YouTube. Whatever works best for you, you folks. Thanks for watching, and have a great night.